that's okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, George, thanks very much for inviting me to present again today. And since I don't generally speak too loudly, I'll make sure I get this in front of my face. How's that? Okay, Texcom. Uh, we're headquartered in Houston. We're a Texas C corporation. Uh, we're publicly traded over the counter. Our symbol is TXC. Uh, we uh, post our financials on OTC market, just to be pink sheets. Uh, we now have a team together. We've started our audit on 2010's uh, financial results, and we have a target of getting ourselves full filing on a board by the end of this year. Uh, like Brian, my primary purpose is to, to address market awareness. We are looking for, for capital, both debt and equity, to fund our very aggressive growth program, uh, predominantly by acquisition. But uh, today's purpose, like Brian's, is, is to get some market awareness. Uh, we are also significantly undervalued, uh, need more attention on our stock, and that's one of the reasons why we're really happy to be invited to participate as a presenter to this organization. Again, standard statement, you all are familiar with that. Uh, I wanted to explain to you that our corporation uh, has investments in two subsidiary companies. Uh, the one on the left, MB Environmental Services, is an environmental service provider to the exploration and production segment of the oil and gas industry. What we do in that business is dispose of waste materials generated by exploration and production activities. We also have a 20% interest in a second LLC, which uh, is in a different category of waste disposal, and this is for deep well underground injection of non-hazardous industrial wastewater, process water from chemical plants, refineries, uh, any other kind of industrial operation that uses process water. I'm not going to talk about that today because time does not permit, but there's one correction to make to the slide, it says permit pending. Actually, our permits were now issued by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality on February 17th. So we're now in the process of getting our engineering design, raising our funds, and we'll be building out a facility that should be in operation by the fourth quarter. Now, back to MB Environmental Services, the subject I'm going to talk to you about today. Uh, what is this waste disposal all about in exploration and production? Well, in the top of my slide are the traditional materials that have always been generated by exploration production. Drilling waste, sometimes called non-hazardous oil field waste, or NOW, is what comes out of the well bore while you're drilling the hole. It's rock tailings, uh, drilling muds, uh, chemicals, and salt water. Uh, when a well is in production, it also produces water. As an as a oil well ages, the amount of hydrocarbon declines, the amount of water increases, and eventually, when the oil is all gone, it will water out. Uh, but while that's happening, that water must be disposed. Uh, and then finally, there's clean out of equipment, tank trucks, tanks on the, the batteries on the surface, piping, and so forth. That's been the traditional business. There are hundreds of thousands of disposal wells in the United States that dispose of produced water. It's a very simple, mundane, low capital, uh, low technology business. The people in that category are very numerous. It's not an exciting business, but the reason we have our company involved in this is what's on the bottom of the slide. And those two bullets represent two factors that are recently uh, have raised their heads in the exploration production business and represent very serious challenges to the companies in the, in the field. Naturally occurring radioactive material is commonly known in the business as NORM, N-O-R-M. And uh, the frac water or water that is generated or used during the fracturing process, I'm sure everyone in this room is aware of fracturing of shale gas deposits uh, happening all over the country. Uh, there's been a lot of publicity about it because of public concern over potential uh, contamination of groundwater. So we are already involved in a big way, and I'll tell you about that in a moment, in disposal of norm. Uh, but we are now planning to get involved in disposal of frac water, not only disposal, but also recovery and recycle of water. And as I'll also explain later, there's an enormous play in the business jargon uh, in a gas shale called Eagle Ford in South Texas, and that's in our neighborhood. So we intend to be an active participant in that as it experiences explosive growth, literally. It's almost like a California gold rush in a part of Texas that's very sparsely populated. Uh, 
what is norm? Let's talk about that for a while. Uh, radium is everywhere in the crust of the Earth. Radium is the radioactive element that's present in this material we call norm. It deposits out of the salt water that is produced along with the oil and or gas. Uh, and it deposits out a scale on the tubing that goes down the well bore and also on all the surface equipment. That's a picture of a piece of pipe that was a tubing going down a well. What does it look like to you? It looks like something we've all seen. It's like a, a water pipe from a hard water well in a rural area. That's all it is. It's scale. It's, it's minerals, calcium, magnesium, strontium, barium. Radium, the radioactive element, is in that same chemical family. So when these elements, these minerals, scale out of hard water, when the water is cooled, radium is entrapped in that scale. Uh, when, when the scale is inside the piping or tanks, it really is not a serious threat because the type of radiation that it, it, it emits is not very penetrating. It really doesn't get through the metal. So the industry has addressed this problem over decades since they've become aware that the, the radioactivity exists by keeping it under wraps. Uh, the, the problem has not been addressed. Uh, it's, it needs to be corrected. But if, if you're attempting to remove that scale from piping or any other equipment and it dries and you now get airborne particles that can be inhaled or if the material gets on the ground, and it can get in groundwater, it can be ingested, and that is a very serious problem. Uh, George always reminds me to, to say this early in my presentation. Uh, back, uh, I think about six years ago now, uh, there was a, a lawsuit against Exxon for contamination of ground and groundwater at a site in Louisiana that was cleaning that scale out of tubing that you just saw. Uh, it, it, it led to a, a a lawsuit involving a lot of attorneys and a lot of people, and it ended up with a $1 billion uh, judgment against Exxon. Uh, Exxon's appealed that over the years multiple times, and finally ended up settling for $168 million. But that episode has created a high level of awareness within the industry. Everyone is now concerned about the fact that they somehow have piles of tubing or old tank batteries sitting out that has this norm scale in it. What are we going to do about it? Just an example of some of the other kinds of equipment that I'm talking about where the norm is present. How much is out there? In 1995, Argonne National Lab, in conjunction with the American Petroleum Industry, did a survey of exploration production companies throughout the whole nation and came to a conclusion that there's about 10 million barrels of this scale that you saw in that pipe sitting in all the hardware and all that iron equipment sitting out there. And at a cost of about $300 a barrel total, to dismantle the equipment, remove the scale, decontaminate it, transport it, and have it disposed responsibly in a permanent site amounts to, at that time, about a three and a half billion dollar market. There are about 60% more producing wells in the country today than there were in 1995. We estimate the market now could be as much as five and a half billion dollars. Oh, I missed something at the end. Uh, options to dispose of the scale are limited. In some areas of the country, uh, the scale that's removed by physically scraping it out or hydroblasting it out is sent to landfill mixed with soil. Uh, we're only one, Texcom, our, our subsidiary, is only one of four companies in the country that's permitted by the environmental agencies to dispose of this norm by injecting it underground. And what makes that unique is you must be in a proper geographical area that has the right underground geology. And of those four companies, we're only one of two that's a publicly traded. Okay, with that as a background, why are we professing that this industry is going to grow? 